did not put a dollar figure on the injustice Devontae Sanford experienced, but he says he can finally move on with his life after he was nearly robbed of it. I look at myself as like the true definition of being like Detroit tough. Get what I'm saying? Like Detroit, we didn't been through so much, but like we didn't rose through the ashes. You know, um, I didn't been through so much. I didn't rose through the ashes. It would border arrogance if anyone else said it, but few have stories like Devontae Sanford. The 29 year old reached a $7.5 million settlement with the city of Detroit for its role in his wrongful conviction and incarceration for crimes he did not commit. Every day I, I wake up and like, I, I, I see that I'm, I'm seeing like a, a, a room instead of a cell. It just like amazed me. You know, it was times I thought like I was gonna die in prison. We sat down with Sanford along with his lawyer, Julie Hurwitz, as he pondered his future. I'm just ready for like, the new beginnings in the journey because like I know things is going to be a lot easier and reflected on how his life became anything but after that quadruple murder on the city's east side in 2007. Hurwitz says officers picked an easy target in the young teenager and coerced him into confessing to the crimes. In the course of their targeting him, they literally fabricated evidence and committed perjury in order to ensure that this young man, uh, that they could get a conviction. Sanford at 15 years old was sentenced to 37 to 90 years in prison. But a few weeks later, hitman Vincent Smothers was arrested and confessed to 12 murders for hire, including the killing Sanford had been convicted for. Unlike the teen whose confession did not match up with evidence at the crime scene, Smothers delivered precise details about the killings that helped create a snowball effect. U of M's Innocence Clinic, the state appellate defender's office, and Northwestern Center of Wrongfully Convicted Youth dug into the case, leading to an official order to reopen in the investigation and ultimately Sanford's release from prison in 2016. Sanford says while he does not approve of Smothers' violent lifestyle, he's grateful he spoke up. He protected me, not the cops. The cops took advantage of me. It's because of this man. You know, I'm able to walk and breathe and just, you know, be at peace so I can sleep again. It's because of him. You know, um, I got a son. And that's who Devante is living for now, the two-year-old who bears his name. He also has a nonprofit aimed at getting kids off the streets. He even wants to become a content creator content. on YouTube. Like, I just, I want to be normal. And, like, that's just me living my life in a way that I feel as if, like, this is, yeah, this is me being normal. This is something I could have saw myself doing, maybe, like, if I had the chance and the opportunities to do. Right, but those was taken away from me. So now I have the chance, the opportunity, so I'm gonna embrace them with gratitude. Devontae Sanford, in his own words, he is set to speak at the National Convention for the Innocence Network, a coalition of groups dedicated to freeing the innocent and preventing wrongful convictions around the globe. I'm Randy Wembley, and this is The Edge.